Hello, friends. Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom. Then we have a whole bunch of stuff to discuss, including Dak and Zeke maybe not being the smartest people out there. We're going to start with draft discussion. How about T. Higgins and the Dallas Cowboys? I'm going to give this one two stars. I actually almost gave it one because I don't think it ends up happening. But it is still noteworthy and significant that the Cowboys announced that Higgins was one of their one of their pre-draft meetings. As a reminder, you pretty much have unlimited numbers of these. The only issue is potential time constraints for either your organization or the prospects involved. But he was one of those pre-draft Zoom video meetings. Higgins is an outside wide receiver. Great touchdown production in particular at Clemson. I just wonder about his fit with the Dallas Cowboys. I like the player, not at 17, would love him at 51. Don't think he's going to be there. But Higgins, I think, has to play on the outside in the NFL. That's where he's going to be. He's going to be a vertical threat because of his size, because of his jump ball ability. He's able to win along the sidelines. But he's not a a dynamic athlete. I don't trust him in the slot. The production's awesome, don't get me wrong. But I think there's a different receiver who we'll get to in just a second the Cowboys have met with. I think makes a whole lot more sense than T. Higgins, even though I do like the player, I just have some doubts about his exact fit, given that you can play Cooper and Gallup on the outside. Yeah, you can play him in the slot, but they've played pretty damn well on the outside already. As many of you know, I do a lot of Cowboys videos here, duh, and a whole bunch of NFL videos as well, especially around the NFL draft. So if you want more Cowboys coverage, I tweet out a whole bunch of stuff, and of course, NFL draft coverage as well. Hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. I'll make your life a little bit easier if you guys want to follow me because I really appreciate it. I will put that link in the comments. It's already in the description as well. But I'll put it in the comments. All you guys got got to do is click and follow. I do have my DMs open. I am very behind on messages. So if I haven't responded, I promise you I'll get to it at some point in the near future. All right, back to the receiver side of it. I mentioned Jalen Rager. He is a much better fit for the Cowboys. Still going to give it two stars, though, because it's the NFL draft. Who knows what's going to go on? Who saw Juan Thornhill being there in round two and the Cowboys passing on him? I'm still kind of bitter about that. But Jalen Rager, I think, would be a really nice fit for the Cowboys. There is a small chance he's there in round two. I don't think that he is, but you absolutely never say never. If he's there in round two, I am all aboard that idea. He is great after the catch, surprisingly good on contested catches. He is a better fit than Higgins as well. You've got returnability. You've got a guy who can thrive in the slot, I think, in the NFL. The issue for Rager, well, the production is, well, it was bad. It took a big step down from 2018, but there's a pretty easy reason to explain that. TCU's quarterback play was horrible last year. I don't really know how else to say it. It was not pretty. Now, Rager put out his pro day numbers recently, and I wanted to make note of them and also explain why I'm mostly throwing them in the garbage. So at the combine, Jalen Rager showed up at 206, ran a 447, a 7313 cone, and a 446 short shuttle. For reference, 206 was bigger than he was listed at TCU. I thought he balked up too much. The three cone and short shuttle are really bad numbers. Then at his pro day, he had apparently two guys hand timing. One said he ran a 422, and the other said he ran a 428. Doubt. These pro day numbers, guys, are not reliable. That 40-yard dash, three-cone short shuttle, the three-cone short shuttle will go from like fifth percentile to above 95th percentile. That's not a realistic jump. I thought Rager balked up too much. The combined three-cone short shuttles were lower than normal because I think they were just asking too much out of the prospects. He is a great athlete, but I don't want to hear, oh, he's a 4-2-2 guy. There's no way that pro day is correct. Now... Riggins, or wow, Rager versus Higgins, as I somehow merge both those players' names. If I could have, if I could have, I'll tell you what, as I get off track here, if I could have T. Higgins' size and Jalen Rager's athletic ability, that guy would be the number one receiver in the NFL draft by far. The production over the past two years does favor Higgins. He also had Trevor Lawrence, so I think that's a bit of an advantage towards Higgins. So let's say both these guys are on the board in round two. Who are you picking for the Cowboys? Type H for Higgins or type R for Jalen Rager. I'm going to make this the pin comment. 
of today's video. That way, when you get the ad break here, scroll on down and cast your votes. H for Higgins and R for Rager. Got to talk about this one now. Dak and Zeke are quite simply not being the smartest people out there right now. This one, unfortunately, is four stars. I just, I don't want to talk about it, but how can you not? This is, this is an important discussion to go over. Now, TMZ Sports claims that Dak had a party for one of his friends. Up to 30 people showed up, including Zeke. Now, the police were actually called for this, and they checked it out, and they, they couldn't prove there were 30 or that there were more than 10. It honestly doesn't matter too much. In terms, of, in terms of the optics and the reality situation, yeah, he avoided getting in trouble with the law. But the whole point of the quarantine right now, of staying at home, why we're not filming videos in the office, even though we could if we really wanted to, because we're, we're a sub-10 person company. The reason why we're doing that is to be smart. This is not smart, Dak and Zeke. I, I maybe had this planned, maybe kept it under 10, that's cool. This is not the point of why we're all working from home. This is not what we're trying to do. Now, I didn't get overly bothered by Dak and Des Bryant working out. Again, also not a great look. But having a party with friends defeats the whole purpose of what we're trying to do. Now, do I think Dak or Zeke are intentionally being bad people? No, of course not. I just think they're being a little young and a little reckless and thinking they're immune. It's just a bad look. And somebody in that camp, be it from the agent side of it, from the from the cowboy side of it, got to go, guys, you just can't be doing this stuff right now. I, I know we all want to see, see our friends do the Zoom FaceTime thing. It, it's frustrating, I know, but this is just a bad look. So, yes, I am disappointed in Dak and Zeke. No, I'm not going to try and say they're the worst people alive. They're not. There's other people doing way dumber stuff right now. But this is not a good look. You just cannot be operating like this in the world we are in right now. You simply have to stick at home. I know you might end up getting bored, but it is not for you. It's for the rest of the community at large. So unfortunately, yeah, I am disappointed by Dak and Zeke. Let's get back now to, oh yeah, I'm also mad about this one. Trading up for Chase Young. Awesome idea, right? Bad news, guys. This isn't Madden. Fake news on this one. Fans sided was like, here's some bold draft predictions. And one of them was trading up for Chase Young. A lot of issues here with this. Uh, the Cowboys side of it. It's extremely expensive. In fact, producer Dylan wasn't even sure it was worth the fan side of trade package. That we'll get to. More importantly, why would the Redskins, or also mentioned in the article, the Lions trade or down from Chase Young? Chase Young is going to be, in all likelihood, the highest player on both of those teams' boards. Maybe there's Joe Burrow above them, but he's going to be one of the top two guys. Fan side, it was like, just do this. Second overall pick for Chase Young. And the, it, it will become Chase Young, I should say. The Redskins then get 17 overall and a future first-round pick. That seems fair, right? No, it's not fair. That's not the value here, guys. If you want to base it on the trade value chart, and it still might be a little bit lower, look at it not just number 17 overall and your 2021 first round pick. You're also looking at a 2021 second round pick, your second round pick this year, and a third round pick. And you know what? That still might be too low. In fact, it probably ends up being too low, at least from the Redskins' initial offer. That's not worth it for Chase Young because that's not just this draft. It's next year's draft too. So this just does not make sense for the Dallas Cowboys. I know a lot of you guys ask about it. Give up the dream. It's not happening. You're not getting Chase Young this year unless he has a Laramie Tunstall-esque video or as major other people we don't know about. It's just not going to end up happening. Now, speaking of trades in general, which one do you prefer to do? Type U for trading up or D for trading down. I prefer to trade down. And I think that's how almost the majority feel around the NFL, which is why it's often tough to actually pull. But cast your votes, U for trade or D for down. And while you're voting, I got some deals for you guys. Head over to chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jersey. That is chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jersey. Up to 25% off all types of Cowboys jerseys. They've got Dak. They've got Amari, Leighton Van Der Esch. You know what? Custom jerseys are also on sale at chatsports.com 
slash Cowboys jersey. Do not worry. I will make sure the link gets in the comments and the description of this vi video. Moving on now, let's talk more draft because, well, that's where we're at right now in the NFL calendar. How about Kenny Willekes? I'll give this one two stars. It's intriguing to me, and I wonder if it's more in the range of where the Cowboys might be willing to look at defensive end and so they don't take someone in round one. Willekes is a, I hate to stereotype, but he kind of is that guy. High effort, former walk-on kid at, at Michigan State, pretty good run defender, very productive for Sparty as well. The concerns are short length in terms of his arm is going to give him issues against the NFL offensive tackles, and he's not a great athlete. He looks to me like a day three rotational piece, someone who can compete with Joe Jackson and can compete with Dorrance Armstrong and even Jalen Jelks for one of those defensive end backup roles. And I think the Cowboys are still looking in that area because Alden Smith, Randy Gregory on the roster for now, complete unknowns. You don't know what you're going to get given how long they've been away from the organization. Crawford will play some defensive tackle as well. But Willikis could be a day two pick for the Cowboys. This one was not publicly confirmed by the Cowboys, by the way. He, Willikis, though, told it to Sky Sports in an interview. So that, that's the defensive line depth that was dressed up there. So what's the bigger need for the Dallas Cowboys? Is it defensive end? Type DE. Is, is it defensive tackle? Type DT. I look at defensive tackle as the biggest need because I need depth. I need bodies right now. I don't have enough of those guys right now on my roster, so I am typing DT. But there is one other news item that I wanted to get to here on the Dallas Cowboys. Savion Smith has joined. He's going to provide some added cornerback depth for Dallas. An undrafted free agent in 2019, played with the Jags in the preseason, played two games for the XFL's Houston Roughnecks. I, I saw people ask me, okay, well, where does he fit in on the depth chart? Pretty simply, think of this almost as, as like a futures deal for Smith and for the Cowboys. Like, this is someone you sign after the season ends from your practice squad, from a different team's practice squad. This does not fix your cornerback need. It gives you another guy with Deontay Burton or Chris Westry or DJ White that can compete for a practice squad. Or maybe they surprise and impress. Awesome if so. But this is going to be a practice squad guy for the Dallas Cowboys. I don't anticipate him even making the roster. Now, he's a former high title recruit, so you hope for a nice surprise here, but you did not sign Smith and go, okay, we're set now at the cornerback spot. This is depth. This is preseason. This is maybe a practice squad guy you try to, to develop. I don't anticipate Smith playing any major role in 2020 for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, Click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.